listen to this track, bitch. Podcast checking back in. Homecoming is in full effect, and we got some legends on the stage. Legends, y'all give it a one time for Bonzi Wills. Yes. And we got the wonderful Rochelle Stevens, Doctor Rochelle Stevens. Don't play with her. Bye. Straight Thank up, you guys man. How y'all for doing? Taking time out to come and talk to us, like. It's so inspirational just to even be on the stage with y'all because I'm looking at people I looked at on TV playing basketball and people I looked at on TV running track, winning gold medals. It's just, I'm just, uh, I don't know what to say. Hey, I feel the same way. (laughs) Thank you. We see you on TV too now. Yeah, hey. (laughs) Man, tell me what it was like. I got to know out the gate, man, coming. We got Mr. Ball State University, man, the baller himself. How did how, what was it like, man? Getting going to the NBA, you know what I'm saying? When they called your number, all the hard work, all the dedication, all the blood, sweat, and tears that you put in. Tell us what it was like, man, when they called your number and and the difference in work. You know, you already had a routine of work that you put in. What was the what was the the the, the difference in in level of difficulty? I mean, when I got drafted, I felt good for my family and my community because that's who really really helped me you know, get to where I was. I mean, they pushed me, they motivated me. They, uh, they, they took care of me when I, you know, could have, could have went the wrong way. Uh, so I, I really was happy for them. And just to see that, that smile on my mother and father's face when they called my name and my sisters and brothers, I knew that I had the power then to help in my community. And that's what I've always been about. I'm a community guy. I'm a, I'm a people person and basketball is just an outlet for me to um, do bigger things. And, you know, basketball came natural for me, but doing the stuff in the community, that was something I really wanted to work hard and be good at. Um, because, you know, impacting the next generation of kids is what it's all about. You know, and I'm a father and I get it. And, you know, I know my, my, my path is over with now in basketball, but I got to like, that's why I love this coaching stuff, because I get a chance to really pour into these kids everything that I've learned and everything I've been through experience wise. And hopefully that they can learn from it. And, you know, when they come to that crossroad, they'll think about something coach said that can help them. How did you deal with the cousins, the aunties, the hey, all the new cousins that you automatically got, man? Let me hold some. Let me hold some. I need, I need. How did you deal with, you know, outside, you know, family, the cousins and everybody asking for something? Well, it took me about five years to learn the word no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because you want to help. You know, you want to help. And when you come from the inner city, and you have a cousin or a family member come to you, and you know their situation, and you know $200, $500 can help them tremendously. So I, I, I've done that so much, and sometimes, you know, when you open that door, it's tough to close. And, you know, after a few years of, you know, them odd two, three hundred turning two, three thousands, I, I learned how to say no quick. I know, that's right. Okay, so me, I just talked to Rochelle on the side. I was telling her, like, she has been an inspiration to me. I know I didn't run track, y'all. I know. But she just always stood out to me. I wanted to run track because my dad did, but you just made it look so good. Like, I was like, wow. She, you just, just was so poised and beautiful. And I just want to know, how did you feel when you won your first gold medal or your first Olympic medal, period? Like, and whether it was goals, whatever it was, just how did you feel when it happened? You know, it's a great feeling. And first of all, it's just an honor to sit on the platform with you two legends and my Thank one of my you. favorite ball players, Bunzi. Uh, but to my team to the left, LOC track and field team, yeah. L. Yes, yes. All right. So LOC, team, y'all heard that? That sounds good, right? Do you think y'all can write something and we can be in the background in one of y'all yeah. videos or something? Yes, let's go. <laughs> hey, it's always an honor to be able to represent first your family, uh, the community. So many people are cheering for you and rooting for you. I can remember my mailman would raise money to just help me get up to those track trips and uh, different people in the community would give to me. And so that's one of the reasons why I reach out and help so many other athletes uh, through the Rochelle Stevens Foundation, over 30,000 athletes been through the program since 1990, and they get the opportunity to run and try to get scholarships. But, you know, to be on the largest platform 
and the entire world because the majority of my friends are athletes. Uh, NBA stars, NFL stars, Super Bowl champions, boxing champions, and they will always say, they say, Ro, you might not can match us with that bank account, but you are on the largest stage in the world because you get to compete against the entire world. And we are the real world champions. And to be able to stand there from the streets of Orange Mound, OM, Tennessee, yes. Melrose Golden Wildcats, had to represent the hood. You know, and had that Russian man that had sideburns and hair on the chest. You know, I was like, I don't care where you from. I'm from Memphis. Right. I'm not scared. <laughs> hey, yes. I don't care. I got to give you an elbow, take you to lane two. <laughs> I'm going to represent. And so to be able to represent our country, represent the, the neighborhood, the family, represent the God that I serve, was a great honor to win a silver medal and a gold medal and a total of nine medals in all as a world-class athlete. Wow. Man, what made you run so hard? What did you, what, what were some of the things that gave you the motivation, the fuel to work so hard to, to you know, it, what was it, you know, losing somebody early? You know, a lot of times we go through pain and pain gives us that, 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 that fuel that it, it gives us that motivation to conquer anything. What, what, what do you think was your fuel? Well, my fear started with watching the Wilma Rudolph story and her challenges as the first black African-American woman to win three gold medals, knowing that she had polio growing up as a child and they said she would never walk without braces. And so she became the first African-American woman to win those medals. And that very next day I started knocking on people's doors like, hey, I'm going to the Olympics. I was only like 10 years old and I was knocking on doors like, I'm going to the Olympics. I didn't know how fast I could really run. Start challenging people to light pole to light pole. I can beat you, I bet I can beat you. Go to the next street, I'll take you, let's run, let's run. You bring your cousins up, I'm gonna run them too. But as, uh, like I said, all of my friends are athletes and we had the dream of moving our parents out of the ghetto. And, and you always hear about the guys buying their moms, the car and the house, but I didn't have any brothers. So I'm the firstborn, I'm the big sister. So I was like, I'm gonna be like my boys. I'm gonna be the one to move my family out the hood. And that was my motivation. I was like, you mean I can make this kind of money to run this many seconds? So that motivated me to do 2,000 sit-ups a night. That motivated me to run at six in the morning. That motivated me to run at two in the morning with my Doberman name, Sexy. <laughs> money, I love money. Yes. <laughs> so my question is for Bonzi. So well, Coach Wells, Coach Bunsy, Coach Bunsy. <laughs> so with you being at the, have made it to the highest level yeah. within basketball, how do you prepare your team to, because you know you're looking at them, you see things they don't see. Yeah. So how do you prepare them to be like, okay, I know if I let them go right now, mm -hmm. they'll be all right at the next level if they, you know, made it that far. How, what do you do to prepare them for that? Well, I, I try not to overthink it with the kids, and I keep it simple with them. Um, I, I definitely keep it simple and just keep the fundamentals in them every single day and have consistent habits. You know, life is about consistency. And, you know, we, you know, we, we can do a bunch of crazy drills and all that stuff, and we don't really do that where we're at. We just kind of just stay to our core, stay consistent, do the similar stuff every day. So our guys, when we get in the game, they're not thinking. They're just playing. And that's what I want our guys to do. Just go out there and play ball, have fun. You know, you've been doing it your whole life. I don't want you out here just like, oh, you know, coach is going, if I miss a shot, coach, I'm not that type of coach. I just want our guys to go play, represent for their name that's on the front of their jersey, and most like, mostly the name that's on the back of their jerseys, which is the family name that means the most to me. What, what do you think were some of the things that helped you become uh, a, a coach? You know what I mean? Like, we all want to play the game. We always want to be in the game. We want to be the superstar. We want to be on the highlight reels and whatnot. What do you think some of the things uh, that helped you become a coach and, and instill that leadership and say, hey, I know I can take this to the next level and, and coach the youth. Well, start, I'm a father. So it started, you know, uh, Pee Wee Leagues with your son playing ball, um, yeah. just being an AAU dad. I started an AAU program, had an AAU program for years, and I didn't even know if I wanted to be a coach. I just knew I wanted to be a mentor to kids, and I thought coaching would just – keep me kind of bottled in a little bit where I couldn't go worldwide being mentored for kids. But when this opportunity came about a year or so ago, I just talked to God. And I, and when I woke up the next morning, Lamore and Owen Collins was on my heart. And I called AD Will and I told him I must accept the job and I'm accept the challenge. And I'm just so excited because I didn't really know what I was getting into when I got here. And once I got on campus, just a family atmosphere. Everybody treated me like a brother, an uncle, a friend. Uh, uh, I mean, it was, just, I, I, it was unbelievable. So I'm just, 
thankful that they chose me and I'm, I'm a leader of men. For sure. Talk about real quick how we accepted you when you came to Memphis. I remember when you came to the Grizzlies, Zebo was bragging, everybody was bragging, like, man, we got Bozzy Wells on the squad, man. What was it like playing for the Grizzlies? And 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 talk about the acceptance that you had just in the streets and in the in the in the, in the city of Memphis. It, it was different because you know I just left Portland, and you know Portland it was predominantly a white state and white fan base, and they was hard on me out there at times, um, especially towards the end. And I didn't know what to expect when I got to Memphis. And when I got the call from the great Jerry West, he said, boy, you're about to see something, some love when you come down here. And I didn't really know. And I remember the first game, I mean, it was just crazy to just hear people cheering and not booing. You know, just cheering and not booing. And then I went to this club later on that night. And I don't know if y'all remember this name, but it was called the Premier. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, I remember going to the Premier, and they showed me so much love. And the floor was rocking. The floor was rocking. We were dancing. And... <laughs> That's when I knew I was at home, and I knew, you know, from then on, it was going to be love on and off the court. And I've been accepted in this city for the last 20 years. And when I came back around, just, man, just just the acceptance. People always hugging me, telling me they appreciate me. I've had people telling me they love me, and they don't even know me. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it feels good, and it just makes me want to work harder and do everything I can to bring notoriety to LOC and a championship. Okay. Um, Coach Stevens, with you being – who you are you like because i feel like you you ran track but you still were like a superstar with you you know we knew you for your beautiful hair your long nails and just being so pretty but like with your girls how i know you're a woman so you coaching other up-and-coming women how does that go like can i be a fly on the wall like do does it is it what what is it like is it challenges is it you see yourself in them? Like, how is that? You know, you're looking fabulous on the stage. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> you can be on our team. You'll represent us well. Thank you. But, you know, I understand the importance of uh, never let them see you sweat. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't win, at least you look good. <laughs> and But I wanted to win. Yes. And also know that. When you carry yourself like a lady, you look like a lady, you act like a lady, you'll get paid like a lady. I was on contract as the Maybelline girl. I was the first athlete to break the athletic contract mode. Uh, naturally, I was on with Nike, mm -hmm. but I became the Maybelline girl. Then I became the Johnson uh, and Johnson product lady, uh, signed with Patti LaBelle on the same day. Uh, being able to represent 35 Fortune 500 companies. And so when I talk to my young ladies, I'm like, hey, I want y'all to wear some high heel shoes. They're like, to a basketball game? Anybody can look like an athlete, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to teach them to be different mm -hmm. because you're looked upon as different. You are a leader, whether you want to be a leader or not. Mm -hmm. And you have to set those standards high. And when you refuse to set those standards high, you just blend in with the regular people. So if, like I said, I like money, right? <laughs> Uh, if I had a hidden camera in my office, I promise you we would have the number one reality show <laughs> because it is a live show in my office every day. So I hope that my young ladies will eventually listen to me and take take notes yeah. because I've been there, did that, done that. And guess what? I am still there because I'm still getting contracts. Yes, exactly. It's all about longevity. And how do like both of y'all uh, with 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 the longevity, longevity of your career? How did you keep reinventing yourself to like keep like coming back? I know because how long were you in the NBA? You were in there uh, 10 years, 10 years. So you had to keep constantly it's new people coming in, younger people <laughs> yeah. coming in. How are y'all reinventing yourself, staying, you know, on top of the game? Well, like you said, them young boys coming, they come at your job every single day. So you better be in that lab or you won't have no job. And, you know, you got to just keep working like you don't have a job, you know. Um, and that's what I did every year. I just tried to just try to get better. I'm hungry. I just try to I thought Kobe every day. I thought, what is Kobe doing? What is Kobe doing? And whenever I thought that I go to the gym because I know Kobe was probably in the gym. Rest yeah. in peace, Kobe. So that, that was just he was always our motivator. He was always our rabbit, even though he was a little bit younger than me. But just just his work ethic just kind of just, you know, just just went throughout the whole league that everybody wanted to have that mama mentality and play. And that was, that was my thing. I just wanted to be the best for me. Cause I know I will, if I'm best for me, I know I'm gonna be good on an NBA stage. And you know, I had a great career and I'm just thankful. Cause I know a lot of people who didn't play 10 days in the league. So I'm just thankful for the opportunity, but I just know I wouldn't be able to do it without God, my family and my community. Man, give me, give me top three spots. Uh, you fell in love with food wise, Bonzi, man, what you eating? What, what, 
What what's top three restaurants, man? Food spots that you didn't fell in love with down here in Memphis, man. If you know me, I'm very basic and I'm very humble. Yeah. Give me some all star wings. <laughs> Give me some four way. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I've been going to Gus's Fried Chicken a lot lately. Okay. I'm I've been going to Gus's Fried okay. Chicken a lot lately. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Rochelle, what are you cooking in the kitchen? You know, how are you staying so slim and fine? What do what 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 do you eat? Hey, I need to eat right about now because uh, <laughs> look like some bones up in here. Can't wait till it's over. That's why uh, one of my young ladies was looking at me the other day, and I did about 100 squats. She said, Coach, why are you doing squats? i like, because I need a butt. If you want a butt, you got to do some squats. So I did about 100 squats the other day. They see me doing squats. They don't understand why. But, you know, I do cook, and I don't really know how to eat the junk food because I was in my sport for 22 years uh, on top. And, like, I tell my team from, like, Bunsy, AAU, junior high, high school, college, pro. And being on top, uh, the main thing you have to think about, and especially me when I get out there, my thing was I want to kick your butt so bad you gonna you gonna wish you had stayed at home. So that was always my mentality, even when I trained. I would think about the comp the competition that I would have, and in the process, I want to look good while I'm doing it. So that's why I tell my team, don't bend over, never let them see you sweat, don't fall out, fall out in the bathroom, don't don't let them see that. So it's it's all a mind game. You want to make it look good while you're doing it. And uh, just enjoy life, and hopefully we can produce some NBA stars, some Olympic stars in the future. And we'll sit back on our couch and say, hey, we did it. Want to give shots out to our AD? Isn't that our AD right there? Hey. William Anderson. That's what's up, man. Y'all give it up for Bonzi Wills, Rochelle. <laughs> Y'all make some noise one time. Beauty and the Beast podcast. <laughs> and like that, we gone. Listen to this track, bitch.